Well, by the measures that Washington uses, the American economy looks great. Stock market, of course, is up and has been for a long time. Unemployment is historically low. GDP is fine. But look beneath the surface and there are ominous signs. Young people cannot afford homes or cars or to have children. The most common, common living arrangement of young people is with their parents. Student loans and other debt are strangling the country's middle class. With that in mind, does either party have an economic message to remedy the concerns of the average American family? Austin Goolsby is an economics professor at the University of Chicago, and he joins us. Austin, thanks a lot for coming on. Yeah, great to see you, Tuck. So I noticed last night in the return something interesting. So everyone we know is completely committed to free trade as a matter of religious faith, as you know. But I saw in a number of these races, and I've noticed this for the past couple of years, voters are very distrustful of our trade policies. I and mean, we saw it last night with Sherrod Brown uh, winning in yeah, Ohio. I'd, I'd say that's fair. Yeah, yeah that's so, fair. But, both so parties. Why yeah. It, and it's, it's both parties. It's absolutely both parties. The, the consensus yep. in economics is bipartisan pretty much increasingly. So should we not reassess at all? If the majority of the country is not served by a policy, doesn't that mean it's problematic or no? Well, look, it might, I'm, a, I'm an economics professor, so no, no, nobody's going to out-free trade me. Uh, I, I think that but though you there are that, concerns maybe? on both parties, we, we should. We should re-examine. We should always re-examine. Um, in this case, I think that in, in many of the circumstances where people are the most upset, it wasn't actually trade that led to the problem. But I, I might be wrong. We should re-examine. Well, look, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm hardly an economist, though that's probably in my favor most of the time. But so I, I, I can't prove that either. Here's what I know for certain is that the measurements that we use and certainly that economics professors use to judge the health of an economy don't begin to describe the experience of tens of millions of Americans. Basic, so like if young people can't afford to get married or have kids, why does GDP, why is that a meaningful measure of anything? Yeah, look, look, you're, you're preaching the choir on, on that one. Uh, the measure of GDP and certainly just the average GDP for the whole country is not the only measure. It's probably not even the most important measure. Uh, we should be looking at median incomes, that is, how much the middle class is actually bringing home in their pocket. Right. And most of those measures of wages and income have not grown as fast as, as these broader measures of how corporations are doing and stuff like that. Do you think there's any more important measure of a country's long-term prospects than how many young people get married and have kids? What would be a more important measure than that? I, I agree with you that that is an important one, though there are a lot of things going on. That's been a trend for, for a long time, that people are getting married later and starting families later. But if you, but if you look I at the surveys on it, people of, consistently say yeah. the main driver, and there, it's complex as all human behavior is, but the main driver is economic. We can't afford it. And so wh uh, what, what's more yeah, ominous the, the than The only that? thing I'd highlight, the, yeah. the only thing I would highlight, I, I'm not meaning to minimize that. It is important. It is also important in modern societies that people get as much education and skill as they can because that's going to raise their wages. And when people go to school for longer, that tends to put off when they're getting married, when they're starting their families. So which, could, which do you think is if, more, just as yeah. a philosophical question, which is more important for yeah. a society, being successful at an investment bank or having children? Well, I would definitely vote for the kids uh, over the investment bank. Uh, but at the same time, we want people to get education and raise their skill level. That will allow them to provide for their families. That will allow the, the economy to grow. And that will allow it to be spread more than just in a very concentrated way. But the opposite has happened. Is that, and I know you're, you're a professional academic, so maybe you don't want to admit it, but the, literally the opposite has happened. As universal college has become a reality, it, and it basically is a reality now, the country's oh. become more stratified. So like the opposite has happened from what you've just said. Well, Why, it's I only, wonder? It, only about a third of, of people have a college degree. It hasn't become universal at all. Well, co well, um, co compare that to 30 years ago or 50 years ago. That it's yeah, everybody it, who wants a college degree it can essentially lot, get one. But okay. Educational attainment has stalled out in the country, and I think that's a big component of why inequalities continue to rise. Are you being that serious? Because the country was more equal when like 5% had college degrees. Wait a second. Okay. 
Th I'm sorry, they're telling me I have to wrap up. From 1900 to 1970, we yeah. saw a dramatic expansion of educational attainment. And we, did, we had shrinking inequality over that time. The middle class was doing a lot better. Starting around 1970 to 1975, right. you see educational attainment stall out and you see inequality that, start to rise. I, 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 don't, I don't believe, I don't believe that's I true, but now they're right. telling me I really do have to go. Austin Goolsby, I hope you'll come back so we can talk that through. It's always fun to see you, Tucker. Thank you.